So what is DCM, or degenerative cervical myelopathy? Well, it arises when arthritic changes in the spine compress and injure the spinal cord. A big difference I've noticed from being a nurse, I'd be on my feet all day. Despite surgery, I didn't actually get full function back, so uh, life is quite difficult because I can't walk properly. Before I was injured, I was hands-on beach mom. My children and I spend our free time all the time at the beach, and now I am afraid of the ocean more. I'm afraid of being knocked over by the waves or not having the strength to handle high tides, so things are different at the beach. 2014, I was working, and one day, while I was carrying animal feed, because I used to work in a warehouse, I went to place the animal feed on top. All of a sudden, I had cramps in my arms, problems with numbness and things like that on my left arm. So RECODE DCM is an international initiative to produce recommendations that can help researchers in myelopathy work faster and more efficiently to find out answers. We've taken insights from almost 500 different individuals from across the world. We have to educate each other, understand what disease process is and what is our goal. So New York's the culmination of selecting the top 10 research priorities. A group of individuals from professionals and people with myelopathy will come together to select their top 10. Eospine is doing the RICO DCM study with our partners from Cambridge University and the James Lind Alliance because it's part of our core of our mission to promote excellence in patient care and outcomes. This is one of the few projects that I've ever been involved in where instead of a bunch of surgeons looking at a disease or disorder and trying to say A versus B, you took all the constituents who make up the public, bring them together and say, what is important to you? Bringing everyone together allows a sharing of uh, perspectives. I'm excited. I'm so excited to meet everybody there. I'm excited about this group getting together and, and getting to be a part of this is so important. It's just really been a cool experience. It really has. And I really felt like my voice was heard. DCM in particular is the commonest cause of spinal cord impairment in the world. We recently reviewed the literature uh, on basic science uh, articles published in myelopathy and we found less than 100 for a disease that potentially affects uh, up to 5% of, of uh, adult population. Primary care practitioners don't necessarily have a great deal of knowledge around what degenerative cervical myelopathy is. We as surgeons think we know what's best for our patients, but patients come with quite different subjects for research. I have to be careful that I don't fall because I fall very easily. I sneezed and I collapsed. I had basically broken my neck. I went downhill in about six weeks from the time I felt my legs started acting funny. Anyone can get this condition, anyone. We see things that as surgeons probably in a very different lens than the individuals that have a lived experience with myelopathy. So as surgeons we have a perspective on DCM but in a process like this it's important to capture all the perspectives to make sure you have the full picture. So I think one of the greatest things about medicine in the last decade or two is we've changed our scope and really tried to listen to patients about quality of life. When your spinal cord doesn't work a lot of things don't work. You can have pain, you can have spasms. If we had known more about it early on, wish you wouldn't have been so scared. I'm assuming five years post-op, I'm not going to improve. It's been a, an emotional journey this past 18 months. Having met all the fellow stakeholders in New York, we can be absolutely sure that we have set the ultimate top 10 research priorities. I think funding agencies can be really confident in knowing that if they're funding these priorities that they're not only serving the scientists and the researchers doing the work, but they're also serving the community or people with DCM. After the RICO DCM, I hope we can reach uh, as many funders as possible to take uh, on one of the research questions and hopefully in let's say five years we will have the answer to all top 10 research priorities. What patients need, what patients want, what will improve the quality of their life. Now that we have identified our priorities, we need the international research community and the funders to step up to the challenge.
visit www.rico-dcm.com to find out more.